You know, Nick, we... Do you have any, like, favorite, like, weird sports you like to watch? Because I know me, like, of course, being a movie fan, as you guys probably are aware, mm -hmm. I really love the movie Trivia Schmodown, which is a mixture what is of, that? like... So it's on YouTube, and it's amazing. Uh, it's... It's basically a competition of movie trivia that's got different okay. rounds to it. You try to answer questions, different categories, but it's all kind of based around the idea that like these people competing are like wrestlers, where like they have these storylines and facts ah, and stuff so where they like compete. That, yeah. And like the storylines never really got to me until like the last couple of years because because then I'm like, oh, this guy's got to win the belt again. He's got to win the belt. So like I'm a huge fan of the movie trivia showdown because um, <laughs> I just love all the all the elements of it. But I'm a weird closet. Like I'm a severe closet fan of watching curling. Okay. I think it's so fascinating. I'm going to place you for marble runs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, today we're going to talk about a movie that, that features one of the, I guess, I don't want to say stranger because it's kind of a hurtful phrase, but like one of the more unusual uh, sporting events that, that could ever have been unfolded, one I didn't really know about before watching this movie, and that is the act of competitive puzzle, puzzle making. Yeah. Um, so we're going to watch about that from a team perspective, the 2018 film Puzzles, today on Kyle and the Con Film. Puzzle is a remake from a film, the same title, from Argentina, uh, from 2010. Um, this one stars Kelly McDonald. Uh, she's from Boardwalk Empire, uh, No Country for Old Men. I've always remembered her from Train Spotting. Tra Train yeah. Spotting is where she got her famous. And the very accomplished film, uh, International Star, that we lost uh, exactly a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. Erifan Khan, who, mm -hmm. America, we didn't really know very well, even though he was in a lot of American movies like Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah, Jurassic he kind of dipped his toes into the American filmmaking Black world with, you know, things like Jurassic World and, of course, Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, was he in Life of Pi? He was in Life of Pi, yeah. Pie, yeah. Um, and so he's kind of been like, he's permeated things, like I, oh, Amazing Spider-Man, the, the 2012 film, like he's permeated our our culture, but not in a way where he ever exploded. He was superstardom in India. Like oh, yeah. Major superstar. He was like the Brad Pitt of, uh, of India. Yeah. But here, I loved his performance in here because here it's, it's reserved, but it's powerful at the same time. Yeah, I mean, he's... We never get to see through his lens because we're following Kelly McDonald's Agnes. Yeah, this is all... Um, yeah. and, and, you know, she, she plays Agnes... Uh, Suburban wife and mother who really doesn't have anything. She doesn't have like a personality almost because she just doesn't have anything. Oh, or like an identity for her, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and she basically discovers puzzling when she gets one as a gift at her birthday, which is the most. Um, it's it's. I, I'm sorry, okay. but it's one of those most boring gifts to give somebody. Oh, here. It's a you gift you get of... when you don't know what to get for somebody, yes. unless they're a fan of puzzles. Right. Um, but so she gets into that. It's idea. like an insult, right? Here's a, it's almost like an yeah. insult. If you don't know if you like puzzles, it's like, here, have this. So much so that there's no puzzles in their town. Like, you have to leave town <laughs> to get a puzzle. Um, so she meets Robert, who's a, a competitive puzzler looking for a partner in teams competitive puzzling because his previous partner is gone. Uh, what's interesting, yeah, is that the film is not as boring as that. Type, or that, that synopsis describes it to be. <laughs> I think, we, yeah, because we talk about Casualty of Wars, well, is it not as successful because it's a hard movie to digest? Mm -hmm. I think this movie, even though it's remotely successful, it didn't really, a lot of people uh, stayed away from it because the subject matter seems so boring. But it's a fascinating movie. I love it. Yeah, it's a, a really interesting film in that, you know, when you have these well-defined characters like Agnes and like Robert, um, and Agnes' yeah. husband. Yeah. Oh, and Louis the David Louis Denman. The mechanic, right? I feel bad for David Denman because he's always playing these guys who it's like you know that he's a good person, but he's just the wrong person. Like, and I, I really enjoyed him in The Office and in Brightburn. Um, and again, he's here, and he's just kind of this guy who has complete like it's over disillusionment. Man. Yeah. yeah, about his wife. And I love, um, I love the opening of this movie because it, it could have been boring, but mm -hmm. the idea that she's like serving and she's helping people out at this birthday party and she's you know picking up broken counting plates. down the alarm and, clock for god's yeah. sake she can't wait but this to... birthday party scene is insane because you you don't realize until the end of the scene that it's her, her birthday, birthday party like that i i thought she was helping out louie and he you know, even says like we're gonna go out and smoke outside and you know like and she leaves and she's working at her own birthday party which is probably the most depressing thing i've heard in a while <laughs> And, and of course, she gets the puzzle, which is the catalyst. And we talk about movies, or you're always searching. Movies really are searching for the authentic self. And here, Agnes, about age 40, is finally discovering her authentic self and finding something she's actually good at, yeah. rather than serving others. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives her this 
this piece of, you know, they describe the act of puzzling. And again, like, really, really interesting that they actually do this. They describe the rules of, like, how do you win at puzzling. They describe the, the feeling you get when you get to actually finish something. And, and all the, everything's in its right place. And I was yeah. like, wow. I was like, you made me care about well, competitive puzzles. puzzles. <laughs> like, how did you do this? Um, <laughs> yes. And, and I really like the central relationship that, between her and Robert, the one between her and Louis, and, and especially how they integrate the kids into the the film itself. Yeah, a lot of movie. Ziggy, yeah. and, and uh, who's the other one? Uh, Gabe. Ziggy, who's like, you know, the older of the two kids working for his father, but doesn't really want to take after his father. He kind of wants to take after his mother. And some yeah. of the things that she's known, and he's like, a little, okay. the dad's a little deflated about it. Yeah, which is understand. Yeah, understanding. Um, we always talk about a lot of things. That I, I put this in my notes because after second rewatch, costuming outfits fit this movie. I think Kelly McDonald wearing the outfits. She's it's it's totally Agnes all the way. I think I love the costuming choices of it. I like the setting of it because it looks very dark at the beginning. Yep, and then at the end, it's vibrant. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And and. How, how the costuming defines the character in that Robert, even though he works from home, for the most part, like, tries to dress up. You know, yeah, he tries to pretend yeah. like he's going to work. And there's only that rarity where, like, she gets there early and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, he, he dresses up for the occasion, even though he's he, he's probably not going to see a lot of people. And in the way that she covers herself. I do know? like the, um, yeah, the covers himself. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do like the chemistry of Robert and Agnes because mm-hmm. they know that it's not going to be a romantic Relationship. It's just not going to work. But they have far more compatibility than she has with her husband. Yeah, and that's that's the painful thing about it, is knowing that her and Louis just don't have that connection. Maybe they did when they got together, yeah. but that's a harsh thing to do when you're when you're in a spot. You know, like, because she is, she is stuck in a role. You know, she is a wife and a mother, and literally she's a yeah. giver. Um, she gives time, she donates, she spends time with her church group. But it's maybe not what she is, you know, and I think that's that's incredibly difficult because she features a hard reckoning from Louis as he has his own rule in his house question. Even when she validates, uh, advocates for herself, not mm-hmm. advocates for herself, you know, I'm not, tell- I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, there's a sense of, you know, weakness to it, there's a sense of like, not really a, a loud vocal, like authority, but there's a sense of just still, I'm, as, I'm not, you know, she does it very yeah. quietly. Yeah, so there's a lot of reservations. Her performance is outstanding. Yep. Erfa Khan is outstanding in this. And then, and then like, you know, Louis, all the performances mm-hmm. are well done. And I do like when she's picking up puzzles. There's It's a wall, like, almost like the world up, opened up to her. Yeah, and, and having, all these her, options. having her first puzzle be of a map. <laughs> and how, like and that I think yeah. I think that's I forgot about that yeah. the simplicity of the fact like I personally would not own a map puzzle because I really like movie puzzles oh yeah it's surprising but movie poster but, puzzles yeah but them. like with with her it's kind of this thing where it's like she's never really been out she's left her town yes but she's never really left her comfort zone she's never left she she's a hobbit living in a hole and she hasn't right. left and gone on an adventure and that's what the map represents is on all now we have all these ideas we have all these paths we can take. And it's weird to think, like, an awakening that happens from a puzzle. Like, she has this, like, emotional awakening. I can do whatever I want, so I'm going to put the corner pieces down. Like, <laughs> Did you like the ending? I did not. Okay. It's, it's my the one fault yeah. of the, the film. Well, there's two little nitpicks that I have about this movie. One, I don't think, and this is a weird thing for me to complain about after seeing this movie, <laughs> um, I, I would have liked to have seen more of the puzzle competition. Exactly. I feel like they right. rushed yeah. through that pretty yeah. quick, and I'm like, that's what the whole film, if you're going to call your movie puzzle... You need to have some puzzles. puzzles. And like we get that with the practice sessions. And I like how they're trading barbs at the beginning and trying to feel out, out the situation. But we get to the big competition day and we and barely they, spend my time on it. Yeah. And I would have loved to have seen like a little bit know, of a little quiet. bit more of, out of that. The competition. I wanted to get like up on my like couch and be like, come on, go, you got this. Like I wanted to be a part of that excitement. And I feel like we gloss over the big puzzle event. And I do feel like the ending leaves us in a place where it's the, the term I saw online that I completely agree with is untied. We don't have loose ends tied up yeah. personally. We have her characters, like her the discovery. emotional yeah. Yeah. loose ends are tied up. But I don't feel like what happens at the end of the film ties up the story. Yeah, And that's my complaint, is that I'm a big component for story. Story needs to be, you know, servicing everything. And in 2018, this was in the top 25 film for me. Well, I think it's a top 20. 
But the main reason why it was never a top ten because I didn't like the ending. And the camera choice is right. If you're going to show a competition, like in Color Money or Pool, you're going to show a lot of pool. And here, for the puzzle, and all of a sudden we just start the competition, it's like, okay, we're done. Yeah. I would like to see a little bit of quiet moments of them working together. Well, and I would make a comparison of like... Uh... You know, I joked with you about marble runs at the beginning, but there's a, there's a video group oh, on YouTube yeah. that does competitive marble racing, and they became yeah. big during 2020's like pandemic. Everyone no, was I watched people it's watching great. them. It's great. And it's like they had a knack for making something that was incredibly mundane seem very exciting, and also the hustler and color of money could have been incredibly boring if you did not shoot those sequences with pool. Because honestly, yeah. watching pool, unless you got a steak or a friend in it. You're not gonna you're not gonna care a whole lot. Like I, I don't watch competitive pool, um, but watching it when it's shot really well and really engaging, really could do something well, you know. And I think that's that's something that's missing in the film is that we just don't get time with the puzzles and to actually see the competition, you know. Um, and one of the little snippets of Eric Bakan in the Lady Lost Him is I do like the his introductions. He does set up. It doesn't look like he's acting. Mm -hmm. And that's, God, that's hard to do when you mm -hmm. you're acting, but it doesn't look like you're acting. And he lets everybody else breathe. He lets Agnes breathe, even though she doesn't want to. He loves, yeah, I think he works well with other characters. One yeah. thing that I always... He always give him the key. Oh, yeah. yeah, one thing I always loved about him was that he, he was an incredibly... She's, he's a handsome guy when he was like, you know, when he was going to these award shows. He was handsome when he showed up at these like, you know, big events. But every time you see him on film, he just looks so tired. Like, he just looked so <laughs> tired all the time. And I just, I like, that's maybe the best personification that I always connected with him on, was just like, oh, man, I get that. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Like, you know, he has this way about him. Yeah, like, he's a lived-in character actor because he was able to, the moment he appears, you know everything you need to know about him. You know, like, when he right. played even Masrani. The atmosphere is, yeah. The atmosphere when he was in Jurassic World playing Masrani, he gets maybe, like, five, ten minutes worth of screen time. And there's not a whole lot of stuff given to him there. But, like, when he shows up, you're like, in about 30 seconds, you're like, I know this guy. Like, I know yeah. who he's playing. Yeah. And that's kind of the case here, too, is you know him from the moment he appears. Like, he appears and he's talking about things in his in his homeland that are taking place that she has no knowledge of. And he's and he's kind of shocked, like, oh, you're not aware? <laughs> and, like, I think that's the biggest, like, most shocking part of it is that coming from a small town myself, like, yeah. where she, she's like, I want to watch more news. <laughs> and it's like, what? And I thought to myself, like, I'm not sure, I didn't really watch a lot of news, like, in my small town, like. <laughs> so, like a movie, especially that deals with other characters and her art and discovery, her authentic self and the relationships, dialogue is important. And I think it was one of the best written dialogues is this movie and, and important. Even the kids, even the dinner scene of mm -hmm. her, the kids are learning things about philosophy and they're spitting out on the table and here she's picking up and she doesn't really grasp it yet, but then it's almost like they're telling her without ever really t directly telling her yeah it's and it's that tough moment where like you know that she's you know she's not right for this this existence as a suburban wife and mother stay at home like and help out you know that she's not right for it very early on when you know she's she forgot that her son's girlfriend is not a meat eater and she like makes oh, what's yeah. what's meat chicken like you yeah, know yeah. And, and her really not understanding it too, where she's like, "Well, I can, I'll make fish next time." And he's <laughs> like, "No, I don't eat any meat." And so, like, yeah. how long have you been like this? Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing it because it's actually a funny movie. Sometimes it is. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a heart to it. Uh, yeah, it, it gets a little harder as the film goes on because you start to see these relationships crumbling, and that from every angle, every relationship she's in in this movie starts to crumble at some point. Um, there's a reckoning that's that's unseen, but like, it's a very funny movie as it cruises along because of these lived in characters and because we all do probably know an Agnes even if we don't know her well enough because we don't get the time to learn about her <laughs> yeah the very famous the, 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 the line in the movie is all suffering comes from trying to avoid suffering yeah or uh, paraphrasing mm -hmm. and for her to really understand that that um, and we talk about a lot of that that people seek comfort before they seek pleasure yeah and she's avid, you know, she's one of those that advocately Throughout life, sought comfort. We're actually not really looking to enjoy things. And now she found something she enjoys doing. Yeah. Not only enjoys doing, she's really good at it. Yeah, when he says that you're the best puzzler I've ever met, like that's a big deal from a guy that seems to have been doing this for a while. Um, and I think, yeah, like going on that theme of, of you know, all suffering, all, all suffering comes from not wanting to suffer. You know, like, <laughs> and I, I really like the other theme that I was kind of 
feeling out, which is a, a theme of like fundamental misunderstanding of people. Because you know they have that scene where she's explaining Buddhism that the daughter's girl or the son's <laughs> the, girlfriend is the son's girlfriend, Buddhism. right? Yeah. And the guy's like, "Oh yeah, I heard about some guy who, like let a kid drown because we're not supposed to save people." And she's like, "That's that's that not really a thing," <laughs> you know. And then like this misunderstanding of like she's trying, they're trying to have a conversation about what Buddhism really is, yeah. and the dad's like, "I just shot that guy," and it's like, <laughs> and it's again like you're not listening, you're you're misunderstanding the conversation as we're trying to like move through these waters. None of them really understand what they're talking about in that scene. Yeah, and, and the only person right. who seems like she's exploring it is Agnes. <laughs> Which is very well, because the whole family doesn't really listen to themselves. She has They all know their roles. And the only person that listens to Agnes is Farrakhan's character, Ravi. Yep, and then eventually Ziggy. As Ziggy starts to kind of open up her son. Yeah, um, there's because the, he wants that's to. Because yeah. she starts listening, because, he's, because Robert starts listening. It's like this like levels where they kind of begin to unlock this in themselves is wanting to understand because the I whole family doesn't want to understand. As no, there's is. also a reluctance. Yeah, Louis doesn't care. He doesn't yeah. want to know. He doesn't want to care. He doesn't want to know. He's stuck to his, oh, I'm going to be a mechanic and I, I fit my role and I don't want to change but where Agnes wants to. One thing I really loved about that is that in the misunderstandings that the film opens with, we get a sense of like which characters are willing to change. Yeah. And I think that moment where she calls... You know, or not she calls she, she wakes up in the morning like I'm gonna go and do my puzzling and Ziggy's gonna cook for her and when she calls to tell them how the competition goes and Ziggy and Gabe are like cheering her on yeah. I almost wanted to cry like because like I, I don't think unless you have, are a fan of something like competitive puzzling or something that's very niche yeah. you don't understand that that feeling of no one cares that I love this you know yeah. and no one's interested that I love this even if they don't understand it like I don't understand personally puzzling as a passion but if I knew somebody who loved it I would love that they loved it <laughs> no I'm an avid I'm an avid chess player mm. so I constantly play in chess I usually play about three games a day mm. and I know nobody around me cares <laughs> that I play aggressive chess on my chess app oh okay so I, I completely relate even though the context of puzzling mm -hmm. I'm not really good at chess I'm probably average yeah, for all these years, I'm not I'm not a skill, but I enjoy playing it. See, that's the thing for me too. Is with chess, is like I play it. I know I'm bad at it because I haven't played it enough. And that I'm kind of like you. Like my wife does not really care to learn chess. Um, and I used to know people growing and up. My, who were fans my, of friend, my, my friends and family don't care either. Yeah. My big thing is like uh, I, I love playing board games, and like I will personally purchase a board game knowing if it has a one player mode, just so that if nobody around me wants to play. I can play this game because I just need to. I need to be doing something with my hands at all times. So there um, needs to be a sequel where Kai and I write that there's a competitive ticket to ride game. Play. Yes, I think so. You know, it's like Russian roulette, but with ticket to ride. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> you've got your chess movies. Okay, back off. No, right, there's a bonus of that we could choose from. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, I this, that's where I connected with the film was like having that niche love for something that not everyone around me does love, or even like talking about my Schmodown movie trivia fandom. Like, there's a specific event that happens every year with that movie trivia team where I, I take the day off because it's a, like, 40-person event where people are competing. And I, like, I order pizza, and I make popcorn, and I grab a beer, and I, I get excited about this event. It's like the Oscars for me or something like that where it's yeah. like, I need to be a part of this. So yeah. I get that love for something really weird. And that's one thing I just appreciated about the characters in the film is you, you learn the ones that give a crap. <laughs> I agree, yeah. And so... Uh, Overall, this is a high recommendation for yes. me. Even though I'm an advocate for good endings, it doesn't have an ending that I appreciate. But I love the journey. I love the whole emphasis of discovering your authentic self. Not just Agnes, but everybody else gets to discover something about themselves as well, including your kids. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a, a change. There has to be a change transition. This plays out marvelously. I do like the script. Yeah, and I agree. I agree with you on, on a lot of this. Uh, the ending I didn't really love. Uh, and, and the lack of puzzles at the end, I didn't yeah. really love. But uh, this is a movie unlike some that we've talked about in the past. And in many movies, the journey is the most important thing. And if the ending doesn't work, the ending doesn't work, right. so be it. I um, like the ending not, for once. And, yeah, yeah, not every movie needs to have a perfect... There are some movies where it's like if the ending faults, it ruins the whole momentum because it's driving towards an ending. Yeah. Um, you know, like we talked about the game a couple weeks ago, and like the ending for me kind of hurt my enjoyment of that film because I, I just felt it was leading towards something bigger, and, and the whole film is driving towards the ending. Yeah. When it's more of a character study piece, 
you can have an ending that you disagree with and you still can enjoy the film. And those are those are my issues, is like the ending and the puzzle problem. But we get enough of that in the film where I'm I'm comfortable saying I really enjoyed it nonetheless. Yeah, so it's a high recommendation. It was in the top 20 for me in uh, 2018. Um, it's a little bit on the radar, and I think people give it a try, even though the subject matter seems that it'd be kind of dull and boring. But um, we, that's why we love movies. It makes subject matters that we think they're not interesting interesting. Yeah, my my favorite thing is is finding a film that's about something I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I was even speaking with a friend of mine who said his favorite uh, superhero movies are the superheroes he doesn't know. He's like, I'm a big fan of Ant Man and Guardians because like before <laughs> they came out, I didn't know who those people were, and I, I agree with him on that level in a broader sense for film, like. You know, I, I like racing movies, even though I don't really like racing. Like, you know, it's it's that thing where you you get to see uh, just a little bit of a look into a, a society. Or right. a, or That's a why fashion. we love movies so exactly. Yeah. So definite recommendations from both of us. Um, you know what else we recommend? Uh, checking out our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Kyle Nick on Film, where you can check out the different tiers that are available, help support independent content creators, and help us pick some of the different movies we're going to talk about this season on Kyle and Nick on Film. You can also like this film. You can subscribe for more of our content. we got episodes dropping every uh, week, two episodes a week now. Um, and and don't forget, too, to comment your thoughts on puzzles below. Um, I would tell, love man. to know. Yeah, I would love to know like what you thought about this movie because it is kind of an unusual movie. Um, <laughs> and, and that's kind of the thing I like is finding these, these unusual movies. Yeah. Um, so definitely. <laughs> I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast. And I'm Kyle from GoFromReviews.com. Let's get puzzling. <laughs>